All right, class, one more little intro video until we get into um, actually working some of these genetics and inheritance problems. You know, this background stuff is kind of like the generic biology, kind of memorize this stuff. But um, the rest of the videos after this, like we're actually going to be pretty active with stuff. You're going to be working stuff out calculating answers from your results and things like that so it's really active it's really cool the genetics part of any bio class is really cool and especially when you can look at inheritance all right so our punnett squares we're going to use these and all those problems we're going to use these things called punnett squares and what these punnett squares are going to do is they're going to look at all possible combinations look at all possible combinations of gamete fertilization. And it looks at all possible combinations of gamete fertilization. All right, so the first thing we got to understand is if we have a parent, what kinds of gametes can they make? All right, so what we really mean by that is if um, you're a diploid person and your cells are going to have heterozygous genotype, big A, little a. When that cell goes to make gametes through the cell cycle with meiosis, right? We use meiosis to make gametes. We get these four daughter cells. What gametes, what alleles are in these gametes at the end right we have to be able to understand that and you know i could spend a half an hour here doing a picture to show you how we're tracing these things out through meiosis but we don't need that so just kind of roll with this this is a very basic non-scientific way of figuring this out but if this is the genotype of a parent and we need to figure out what would the gametes be so we need to figure out what are the gamete genotypes the absolute easiest thing to do is take these two alleles that we have big A and little a and split them so we would say big A or little a there's a million ways of writing it right you could write big a comma little a same thing right the only thing we can't do with the gamete is leave it as big a little a together because I showed you in the previous video that gamete genotypes these genotypes I was going to use a different color those genotypes have to be one in Right, so they're only going to have one of each letter. And in this case, we're just using A's. So there's going to be one A. Doesn't matter if it's big or little, uppercase, lowercase. A gamete's just got to have one A. All right, so if we go back to this idea and practice some with it. So if we have, um, let's actually do this as a table. Right, so let's say if if this is the parent genotype, then here's the gamete, let's say possible gamete genotypes. All right, so all we're doing is that split the, split them with or or comma idea. And the letter doesn't matter. We've used A's, but it just doesn't matter what the letter is. So if we have big B, big B, our possible gametes would be big B or big B. And I know with this one, there's a lot of people that are going to look at that and go, well, why do I have to do two of them? Because, I, you know, it's just big B. So it, that's all that matters. Well, you, gotta, you should do two of them because when we do our Punnett squares, they're going to look like this two columns and two rows and if you get in here and you say oh well this is just big B you're gonna go B and then you're not gonna have anything there 
So this is going to be blank, and this is going to be blank, and this is going to be blank, and all that stuff's going to be wrong. So, like, just it doesn't take but an extra second to just realize, oh, I need two big B's for that. Big D, little d. Big D or little d. Right, so you get the idea here. Little g, little g, little g, or little g. Right, that's the easiest way of thinking about how the heck do I know what kind of genotypes the gametes can have. It's all because of meiosis and splitting up chromosomes and all that stuff. But just trust me, this, this is how we really want to do this. It'll make it easier. Okay, so using our Punnett square, if we have a couple of parents, let's say we're going to cross this. So let's say these are our parents. Right, so big B, little b, the X means we're crossing with, right? So big B, little b crossed with big B, big B. Okay, if that's a cross we want to do in one of our problems, the next thing I'm telling you you should do is figure out what can the gametes be. Okay, and we just did it with that table. So for each of these parents, just write how I'm showing you to do these gametes. Big B or little b for that parent. Big B or big B for that parent. Okay, now another thing is you know, sometimes you see, you may just see some questions like, if this is a parent genotype, what can the gametes be? And I find in 22 years of teaching biology that if you skip this step here, it's very common for you to not be able to answer that question, right? Because this is not a hard step and you have to do it. And you may even do the Punnett square correctly but you just simply don't know what you're doing with that step. And I'm kind of telling you here, you need to know. I want you to know what you're doing with this step of making gametes. All right, so just do that step. Again, you know, it's an extra 10 seconds to write that stuff out. All right, and then for our Punnett square, um, we need to have these gametes and these gametes getting combined. So this Punnett square is going to be two columns and two rows. There's a Punnett square. Anytime we're only following how one thing is inherited, one character is inherited, the entire Punnett square is two by two, two columns, two rows. Okay? And then we have to take this set of gametes here. And it doesn't matter if you assign them to rows or columns, but they have to be both on the same side. So they both have to be rows or they both have to be columns. All right, so it could look like this. Again, I want to emphasize that if you were doing this problem and you put this as your Punnett square, that's okay. That's supposed to be a check mark. It was kind of a crappy looking check mark, but that's okay. Right? It doesn't change anything. Um, as long as you're not splitting and putting one gamete from a parent in a column and the other gamete from the same parent in a row, that literally would be saying things like this sperm cell fertilizes this sperm cell. And that can't happen. That doesn't happen. All right, and then to complete the Punnett square, you we have to fill this in. We add the columns and the rows together. So like this one is big B and big B, big B, big B, big B, little b, big B, little b. All right, so it's just adding columns and rows. So basically what we're saying is that if we have this Punnett square, right, these are going to be sperm cells, these are going to be egg cells, and it's kind of like 
this sperm cell fertilizes this egg cell, what do we get? Right? Or this sperm cell fertilizes this egg cell, what do we get? All right, we're just not thinking of them with pictures of sperm and egg. We're just thinking of them as for this one character, here's the gene, here's the allele that I have. It's big B or it's little B or it's whatever. So we're going to be doing this with um, all the genetics, crosses, inheritance stuff we're working on. So let's do one more as a practice thing here. And then I want to tell you one last part of this. So let's see, what if we were doing this cross? So these are our parents. So next step, figure out the gametes. And then we're going to put those gametes on a Punnett square. So our gametes we're splitting big G or little g, big G or little g. And then one set of gametes down, down the side for each row, the other set of gametes across the top for each column. And then you fill it in. Right, so there's our completed Punnett square. All right, so last thing I want to mention here, you know, we, we should know by now um, that things like this little G here or this big G here, those things are gametes, right? Those are gamete genotypes. So if those are gamete genotypes, then what are these things? You know, we've, we've gone through this process. We've built this Punnett square. We have these four boxes. We have these things inside the four boxes. So what is it? I mean, what does it mean? What did we really create here? Right? So what we've created are all of the possible offspring genotypes. So it is all, all possible offspring genotypes. That's what's inside the Punnett square, right? So it would give us an idea in this case, if we were making this cross between these two parents, it would give us the idea of how many of the offspring should be homozygous dominant. How many should be heterozygous? How many should be homozygous recessive? Right? It would give us ideas about those numbers and those percentages. So those are offspring. So we, we've kind of got the whole deal here, right? Like we've started with, here's parents. Here's the gametes of those parents. Now here's the offspring of those two parents. And again, it's it's possible offspring, right? So obviously, this this I'm not implying here that whatever this cross is, that there are four offspring every time over and over and over again. That's not true. It could be one offspring. It could be a thousand. It depends on what you're looking at, right? But it gives us again, it's the ratio of what we should expect. All right. So it's really important to understand how we're using these Punnett squares. Um, if you don't understand what we're doing with genotypes and gametes and Punnett squares here, I would encourage you to email me and ask me your questions before you move forward with lecture videos. Um, the rest of the lecture videos are going to have things in it that we are working together and I'm going to be asking you to complete as assignments. So you really need to understand this aspect now before moving forward.